So I'd like to talk about a cascode circuit. And in particular, I'd like to talk about some unique ways of building a cascode circuit. So if you might think about a very simple cascode circuit, you would think, oh, I would be starting with a structure like this, which has a cascode element transistor over a particular, say, second transistor. And remember what the core of a cascode computation is about. It's about this transistor M3 is cascoding M2 because it's making its source voltage actually, you know, sort of cascoding this V1 node. And the whole point of a cascode is to sort of allow that current to go through while fixing that node, or, or more fixing that node is maybe a more precise way to do it. But if you think qualitatively as fixing that node, that gets you in the right sort of framework or, or mindset of thinking about what you're doing here. And of course, if you look at this and you were to say from the input to the current, um, it still looks like I have basically the same transistor. I have a certain transconductance overall for this system, which is relatively just GM2. But then I also then have an output resistance. That is what I would expect, is the output resistance of this element. And then I get GS3, R03 from the top transistor. And you kind of see that there's sort of a pattern to this. Well, an interesting thing happens. I can, you say, well, imagine I have an NFET as a cascode and no one has any trouble. But the minute you say is, imagine I were to take a PFET and cascode that node V1. And immediately your brain gets a little confused. You're like, okay, I see this still this V in transistor, everything is as I would expect, but I'm now going to use the source of the PFET to fix V1. And you think, okay, that is exactly the right rough starting point. And you can see that you get some current coming through there, but I that still kind of mind bends a little bit. And what you need to be able to do to make this work is you have to have some sort of current source, maybe this transistor M4, to kind of balance things. So I'm going to get some current through M2 and some current through M3. And But it still turns out, if you look at the two of these, you have exactly the same small signal circuit. Exactly the same. Well, of course, I'm assuming M, M4 is a perfect current source. If not, then you got to put that into it as well. And what it allows you to do, why would I ever do it with this? Well, it allows me to then fix, say, a voltage near the opposite power supply rail and allows me to work through some headroom constraints that otherwise might be difficult. So in this case, my output resistance, I can do say still say this transistor is cascoding this node, which means I'm going to get a GS3 R3 as I come up here. And then as I look at this node, I've got, well, I've got an re output resistance R02 and R04. So I can immediately just sort of say, oh yes, my output resistance is this nice combination. And you might say, well, that's an interesting single circuit, but I don't see why I would use that very often. And, and in this particular form, we don't use it very often, but it is very much tied to one particular circuit topology, which is called a folded cascode differential amplifier. And sometimes it's drawn this way. There's some slight shifts of how people draw this, but the core of it is I still have a differential pair, and this would look very familiar if you've looked at differential pairs before. And I have then, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cascode these two voltages with PFETs, M5 and M6, to be able to pin these voltages near VDD. Why would I use such a structure? Well, it turns out for headroom reasons that this lower node is going to get moved up and down by the, the larger V1 and V2. That forces that I have to have some amount of voltage across M1 and M2 to keep it in saturation. So I have some very interesting headroom constraints if I don't move the voltage off of out of this sort of main differential pair. Now one way to do that would be to just use current mirrors and that's a really useful topology. But another way to do it is to actually just build current sources and then as a result pull that current, uh, the change of the current into some other loops. And so I have my cascode devices and then I have NFETs acting as a current mirror and actually a very curious topology where I take the two devices, the NFET part gets set up as a cascode, and then I end up taking the output of this node and I sort of do the diode connection structure for the current mirror on that side of it, which nicely says, let me get a nice symmetry in terms of my current mirror on this side, and then of course I get a pretty good structure on the back end. 
And in fact, this works out very well and gives me a very nice high gain amplifier. And we see this get used all over the place in many, many different topologies. Between this and the transconductance amplifier topology, these are really the ones you see used again and again in so many different places.